name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Welcome my dear brothers and sisters. Today is the feast we've been waiting for, the gift of the Spirit, the, the feast of Pentecost. We've been spending these nine days in the Novena, preparing ourselves to receive the fullness of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. And today we rejoice, not just because it is the feast of Pentecost, because we call to mind the first time that the Spirit changed our lives, transformed our lives, called each one of us into a new way of relating with Jesus. And so we thank God today uh, for this great feast and for this opportunity. I'd like to already place and record my gratitude to the Catholic Communication Center, to Father Nigel who will be joining me at this Mass during the readings, but also to all the others who are working behind the scenes quietly and tirelessly to bring uh, this Mass across to you. Let's begin by entering into a moment of silence, placing ourselves in God's presence and asking pardon for our sinfulness. We pray together, I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us of every sin and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We praise God in the words of the Gloria. who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church 
in every people and nation pour out we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen A reading from the Acts of the Apostles when Pentecost Day came around the Apostles had all met in one room when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting and something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire these separated and came to rest on the heads of each of them they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven and at this sound they all assemble each bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language they were amazed and astonished surely they said all these men speaking are Galeans how then does it happen that each of us here in our own native language Parthians, Medes, Emilites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Figria, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responses send forth your spirit, to Lord, and renew the face of the earth together. Send forth your spirit, to Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul, my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your riches. Your response send forth your spirit, O Lord and renew the face of the earth you take back your spirit they die returning to dust from which they came you send forth your spirit and they are created and you renew the face of the earth our response send forth your spirit Lord and renew the face of the earth may the glory of the Lord last forever may the Lord rejoice in his works May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find joy in the Lord. The response, send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts but always the same spirit there are all sorts of services to be done but always to the same Lord working in all sorts of different ways in different people it is the same spirit God who is working in each of them the particular way in which the spirit is given to each one is for a good purpose just as the human body though it is made up of many parts is one single unit because all these parts though many make one body so it is with Christ in the one spirit we are all baptized Jews as well as Greeks slaves as well as citizens and the one spirit was given to all of us to drink this 
is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit, Lord of light, from the clear celestial height, your pure beaming radiance gave to us. Come, you Father of the poor, come with treasures that endure, come, you light of the world that live on earth. You of all consolers space, you the soul's delightful guest, your refreshing peace bestow on us. You and toil are comfort sweet, pleasant coolness in the heat, solace you are in the midst of food. acclamation kindly stand alleluia alleluia come holy spirit fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love alleluia the lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory, glory be to you o lord in the evening of the first day of the week the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters in the renewal, today is a special day for each one of us as we celebrate the feast of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is very, very important in our life, in our prayer and in the way we live. And yet, my dear brothers and sisters, as we look at the readings of Pentecost that the church gives us, we recognize the urgent need to look within ourselves, to introspect, to be able to kind of open our lives more and more to the Holy Spirit. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles tells us of the day of Pentecost, 
how the apostles were in the upper room, how they were praying, and then the Spirit of God descends on them. They hear the sound of a rushing wind, they see tongues of fire, and these come and settle on them. And the immediate effect of this is that they are able to speak in foreign languages. The day of Pentecost is one of the great feasts of the Jews. And it is one of those feasts where many Jews from around the world gather in Jerusalem. And at this point, the Holy Spirit comes down on the apostles and he enables them to speak in various languages. Very often, my dear brothers and sisters, we pay a lot of attention to the gift of tongues. But really, when we look at this particular reading and the story of Pentecost, we recognize one thing, that all the people gathered there understood what the apostles said. I'm not going to go into the details of the gift of tongues that you would have already heard in the way I've shared it earlier. But what is important here is to recognize the one gift that the Holy Spirit gives that everyone understands. Notice it doesn't tell us that all those who were gathered here were Jews only. They were Jews, they were proselytes, those who were converted to Judaism. And it would be fair to imagine that there were other people who were non-Jews, non-proselytes. And so many brothers and sisters, what is the one language that everyone would understand. It is the language of love. It is a language of kindness, of generosity, of reaching out. So the Holy Spirit fills these people with these gifts to not just speak, but to really say things where the heartstrings of people are touched. Suppose you were to pass by a church, for example, and you know there is a sermon going on and you're not particularly interested in going in for mass you've already finished your mass etc but suppose you're just passing by and you hear a few words of the sermon and those words really touch your heart what happens to you you immediately although you do not intend to listen to the sermon you turn and pay attention to what is happening this is exactly what would have happened. The Holy Spirit enables them to speak and to say things in such a way that it touches the hearts of the listeners. And this is where they are transformed. It is what the, the responsorial psalm is. The response is, send forth your spirit to Lord and renew the face of the earth. This is reminiscing the first book of the Bible, Genesis, where the Spirit hovered over the waters and it renewed the face of the earth. From nothing, creation was made. From nothing, the entire world was made, was created by the Spirit of God. And now here, Pentecost is described as a new creation, a new world order, the Spirit hovering over the apostles. And these apostles in turn being able to speak and to transform the lives of people. Notice how Genesis describes this. It speaks of the spirit hovering over the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. Something similar happens here. We see the spirit of God hovering over the disciples. The spirit of God comes there and who is it that speaks? The people, the apostles, they speak and people are transformed. A world is created where people did not believe in Jesus. Now they are transformed and they believe in Jesus. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this power of the Holy Spirit is tremendous. It is transforming, but most importantly, it makes us more and more like Jesus. And therefore the second reading of today taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 12, it speaks of the gifts that are given. The Spirit gives gifts to different people. But it says something very, very important. 
It gives these gifts for the common good to build up the body of Christ. And then we find that these gifts are not mentioned in today's reading. Although it is mentioned in the chapter, they are not mentioned in the reading. And I often ask myself, why would the church choose this particular reading and then edit out all the gifts? Why would it just give us the start and the end? And I think the answer is really because the church wants us not to focus so much on the gifts, but on the concept that whatever gift we have is to build up the body of Christ, the church. Every gift we have is for making people more and more like Jesus. If not, then all these gifts are useless. We are using them for all the wrong reasons. These gifts are given for the common good. These gifts are given to build up the body of Christ. And therefore, the second part of the reading gives us the analogy of the human body. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ Jesus. That is what these gifts are meant to do. Imagine your body. If your right leg decides to go in one direction and the left in another direction, you're going to fall. And if you and I are divided and pulling in all kinds of directions, we're not going to be going very far. And so the Spirit enables us to come together as one body. And then we will be able to do what Jesus asks of us. Look at the Gospel of today. What have you heard? Jesus comes to his disciples. He says, peace be with you. And he shows them his hand and his side. And then he says, as the Father sent me, so now I am sending you. Now this is something common given to all of us. Each one of us is given this gift. As the Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. We are called to go out and preach the good news. But preach the good news not so much by our words, but by our actions and by the way of our life. And so this Pentecost, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to invite you to look at your life and to look at the way you interact with people. Everything that you do and say, does it build up the body of Christ? Does it help that person recognize the presence of Christ in you? Are you moved just to use the gifts or to use them for the greater glory of God, for building up the kingdom? If you're just using the gifts as gifts, I have the gift of healing and therefore I lay my hands on you and heal you, then you're not doing much. You are counterproductive. You're not helping anybody because that person is going to be very happy with you and you are going to be in the limelight. But the gifts of the Spirit are not for me specifically. They are given to me to build up the body of Christ. And therefore I must ask the Spirit for guidance and ask the Spirit to show me what to do in every case, in every situation. Then I will be a true ambassador, a true apostle of Jesus, one who is sent out by Jesus. As the Father has sent me, so I have sent you. Notice Jesus. Jesus was never about himself. Jesus was never about, I have the power and therefore I'm going to heal and I'm going to do this, etc. In fact, in John chapter 6, after the feeding the multitude, they want to make him king. And what does Jesus do? He escapes from their midst because that is not what he's come for. <coughs> Time and again, Jesus will tell us, I have come to do the will of the Father. I can do nothing of myself. I can do only what I see the Father doing. And so the gift of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, is really a gift of asking ourselves, what exactly does God want me to do? To turn to the Father and say, Father, in this situation, what would you have me do? This is what it means to be a true charismatic, one who is truly led by the Spirit, one in whose life the Spirit is active, the Spirit is guiding, 
the spirit is allowed to lead this is what we are called to do you and i are called to be ambassadors for jesus apostles of jesus the word apostle means one who is sent and that's what the gospel says as the father sent me so now i am sending you and then he goes on to give the gift of forgiveness etc to the apostles so that they can forgive sins and this is something also perhaps that we must take in our stride we must take with us to forgive those who hurt us to forgive those who do all kinds of things against us and to bring the peace of jesus jesus is the one who forgave our sins on the cross he prayed for us father forgive them for they know not what they do and as a result of that he comes to his apostles after the resurrection and says peace be with you notice the entire picture of jesus once you recognize this picture this is what we are called to live as the father sent jesus he was faithful so now jesus sends me i must be faithful in turn to what the father wants i must be a picture of jesus in the world he must increase i must diminish i must decrease let us pray at this pentecost my dear brothers and sisters that each one of us will not just concentrate on the gifts of the spirit but rather how am i supposed to use these gifts how am i going to speak in the tongues of love of kindness of generosity how am i going to say a good word to people say an encouraging word to someone else these are things that everyone understands words of love words of patience words of kindness words of it's okay do not worry i will pray for you these are things that everyone no matter what religion no matter what language all of them understand and this is the gift of the spirit to bring peace to bring harmony to bring unity as we celebrate the feast of pentecost let us pray in a special way my dear brothers and sisters that we may be the image of jesus in the world amen let us profess our faith i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting amen my dear brothers and sisters let us lift up now our prayers and petitions as we intercede with the father our response is lord hear our prayer together lord hear our prayer let us pray for the church for pope francis whom jesus has chosen as the chief shepherd for also old cardinal gracious our shepherd here in bombay in the archdiocese of bombay for all bishops priests clergy everywhere god has chosen them specifically for a mission and we pray that they may constantly listen to what god wants and do it with courage with faithfulness for this we pray lord, lord hear, hear our prayer we pray for governments around the world in a special way our own government every government now is struggling with the pandemic of covid-19 and we pray that they may take courageous and effective steps not just to curb the virus but to enable each person to feel dignified to reach out to people to help people live normal lives to provide all that is necessary for the well-being of every citizen for this we pray lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. we pray in a special way also for all those who are afflicted by this pandemic around the world especially in our own city of bombay where the cases are just rising and rising we know lord that you are the great healer you are the divine physician and we implore your help in your mercy upon us 
May your healing love flow in our lives. Touch every one of us. Heal us. Make us whole. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I want to pray, pray in a special way for all those who have died during this period, during this pandemic. Most of them haven't even got a proper burial. I'd like to pray that the Lord may embrace them in his wonderful embrace. For this we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. Pray. Let us pray for ourselves, that we may be transformed by the Spirit, that our lives may be lived like Jesus, giving of ourselves more and more to others, truly being the body of Christ present in the world. For this we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. Our prayers. Heavenly Father, you know all our prayers and petitions even before we place them before you. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless us, to give us all that we need in due time and season. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand and pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice to hands, the, hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. church. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them in your only begotten Son. This same Spirit as the Church came to birth agreed <coughs> This same Spirit as the Church came to birth opened to all people the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth to profess one faith. Therefore, everywhere with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. We pray in a special way for all our dearly departed, those of our families, and all our friends and relatives and neighbors who have gone ahead of us marked with the sign of faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, with Saint Michael, with Saint Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and the unity of your kingdom in accordance with your will. 
May you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Jesus be with each one of you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's love and peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, 
in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go proclaim the Gospel by your lives. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I wish you a very, very happy Feast of Pentecost. Please wish the family for me. And uh, for on behalf of all the CCR, we wish each one of you a very happy Feast. A very happy Feast of Pentecost to you and your family. I am very grateful to be the part of the Catholic Charismatic Union because it gave me a foundation for discerning my vocation to priesthood. I was a very timid person and I had a lot of stage fright. But being a part of the prayer group, I was able to lead praise and worship, give talks, and I was also teaching Sunday school, something which I thought I would never would do because I was afraid of public speaking. So while discerning the vocation, if you feel that, you know, oh, I am not capable, I don't have the skill set, let me tell you something. God knows you and your capabilities more than you. 
So, this is a very important aspect while discerning to know, to realize that God knows more. The initial experience of faith, hope, and love for God came from my family, especially my mother. The booklets and the lives of the saints that she bought for me as a child were a source of great inspiration. Faith and spirit were also nurtured and nourished by the ministry of some very good priests and dedicated Sunday school teachers. Unfortunately, as I grew into my teens and beyond, life became only the blind pursuit of my ambitions and pleasures. God and the faith were reduced to merely a social and superficial obligation. I also fell into grave sin and darkness in certain areas of my life. There was also a lot of pent-up anger and pain from certain harsh experiences of life such as the closure of my dad's company and the complications that followed. It was in such brokenness and woundedness that God was to re-enter and retouch my life in a beautiful way through the renewal and set me We live in a world where success is determined by the numbers that you get. The number of marks, the number of followers that you have on Instagram and Twitter, uh, the amount of bank balance that you have, etc. etc. When I was in the youth ministry of my prayer group, uh, we were drawn to have sessions for the youth. We felt that okay, this is what God is telling us. So we used to plan a lot of sessions, we used to work hard, we used to pray and I would expect at least 30 or 40 people would come for the session but we would only get 3 or 4. So in a way according to the words, this was a big failure. At the same time I was also teaching Sunday school because I felt that God is calling me to teach Sunday school and I would get an attendance more than 80% attendance at every class. So, what is this mismatch of vocations? In one vocation, I am gaining success, and the other vocation, I am having failures. Let me tell you something. Vocation is not determined by your success or failures. By my success, God shows me what I am capable of. By my failures, God shows me what I have to learn to do. Vocation is a gift from God. It is a call to be faithful. It is a call to be fruitful. Mother Teresa puts it in a wonderful way. You're not called to be successful. You're called to be fruitful. If we have this attitude while discerning, then the burden of success, the burden of achieving in a vocation reduces. You have to look at it in a way that God wants you to go in this way of life. questions to a seminarian is how did you know God is calling you to your vocation and how did you make this decision? The answers surprisingly will be as diverse as the number of priests, seminarians and religious that you will come across. The question always is did God speak to you in a bombastic manner like he appeared to Saul, Paul on the road to Damascus or did he speak to you in the silence of your heart like Elijah experienced God speaking to him in the silence of the earthquake and storm. It was in my youth, in my first year of engineering studies that I experienced God's grace, love and mercy powerful at a prayer meeting. Through a series of spiritual experiences at that meeting, I realized how infinitely Jesus had loved me. 
sacrifice himself for me on the cross to redeem me from my sins. And how through my sins and darkness, especially the sins of impurity and the flesh, I had re-crucified my Savior. And how I had gone far away from him, from him and his love through my indifference to his love. I felt deep repentance and a longing to return to his loving embrace. And Jesus gave me the grace to do that through his forgiveness and healing. I experienced also deep inner healing, fears of mental pain and hurt and anger. In the experience of repentance and renewal that day, for a long time thereafter, God began a spiritual journey that culminated in his call to the priesthood. I continued to attend thereafter. Our wonderful Lord and Savior Jesus began to teach and lead me through his Holy Spirit in the spiritual life. He taught me and inspired me and gave me the grace to pray. He taught me to read and feed on and study his word. I experienced a great thirst for spiritual knowledge which Jesus would satisfy by bringing books to me through people or leading me to Christian bookstores. He led me to experience the grace and power of the sacraments, especially the Eucharist and confession. I experienced a great zeal and desire to share the saving love and grace and mercy of God in Jesus Christ anyone who was willing to listen. I am ever grateful for this newfound love and learning that I experienced in my life. To remain dependent on God. And I was finding myself in the same scenario. And like any youth this day would do, or youngster, or any of us e-commerce guys would do, I put down my options. Married life, single life, religious, priesthood. And I wrote all the things I liked. Driving, family life, talents, pursuing, uh, all my different joys and hobbies, all the things that are beautiful in this world. And I put a tick mark, okay, in this I'm getting in, this I'm not getting in, I may not be able to pursue, I'll be able to pursue. And I had this whole chart ready of options, of an evaluation of what I would like. And believe me, I got no clear answer from that. Until such a time that the Holy Spirit spoke to my inner voice and in through my inner voice and told me, convinced me, convicted me to count all the blessings I have received through his sacraments, through the Eucharist, through confession. And he convinced me and challenged me and invited me to extend these same blessings for the years to come to his people. And there it was, the decision was made. He did one more thing. I was into a couple of businesses. By God's grace, they were doing well. He showed me a way to wrap them out seamlessly and smoothly and hand them over to people who continue it. And through all of this, there must be peace and calm and confidence. All will be well. And yes, that small iota of apprehension too which kept me clinging on to the Lord. So my friends, if you feel invi invited by the Lord to any extent, smallest of extent, to join the priesthood or the religious life, I invite you, I challenge you, I exhort you to come and try out and discern your vocation to the priesthood. Even though I felt a great zeal to evangelize, I consciously left them thoughts of the priesthood, as I felt myself absolutely unworthy to ever ascend the Lord. However, through a deep and powerful experience of our Lord's presence in the Eucharist and the Blessed Sacrament, the real presence, and an indescribable and most sweet divine infilling of love, joy and strength of the Eucharist and Holy Communion, I began to experience a deep longing and an attraction towards the priesthood. 
I would feel how I wish that God would give me to the gift of the priesthood. I felt a longing to bring God to his children through the mass and also the overall ministry of a priest to draw souls to God. This was further embellished by reading the lives of saints such as Saint Padre Pio, Saint John Bosco, Saint John Marie Vianney, and Saint Maximilian Colby, great priestly saints. And also to the reading of our blessed Mother Mary's messages in her apparitions like Fatima, which bring out the significance of the Eucharist and the priesthood and the importance of saving souls. Gradually, the deep desire and the longing and the attraction that I felt towards the Holy Priesthood made me realize and filled me with a deep conviction that it was indeed a sign of God's call for my life. I also received certain affirmations in the form of certain priests and certain persons and even my mother asking me to consider the priesthood. However, as I had been working for a number of years now, I now thought it was too late to join the priesthood and so decided to continue working and evangelize as a lay person. However, I soon reached an existential crisis. While outwardly everything seemed fine, inwardly there was a lot of void and emptiness. Existentially, something was amiss and I needed a breakthrough. To those who are discerning their vocation, my only advice would be to contact a spiritual director. A spiritual director is a person who will guide your discerning process. He will put things into perspective. But remember, ultimately it is you who have to make the choice for your vocation and no one else will make it for you and no one else should make it for you. That divine breakthrough came through the mighty working of the blessed Holy Spirit of God who is faced with celebrate And through the operation of his supernatural word of knowledge in one of his anointed priests, Father Joshi, then director of Thabo Rashi, God revealed to him that he was indeed calling me to be his priest. I was greatly relieved to receive this message and realized the mistake I was making of putting it off and heading in the wrong direction. All the clouds of confusion vanished. All the dots got joined and the pieces of the puzzle fell into place. My heart was filled the peace and the certainty that I know of. The Lord provided one more affirmation in the days to come. And with great joy, I could make the decision to join the seminary and fulfill God's call in the year 2011. All praise, all glory, honor, and infinite thanksgiving to Almighty God, most blessed Trinity, and our best mother man alone. Amen. To parents, my only advice is be open and talk freely about vocations with their children. In an age where families only have one child or two children, giving up or allowing a child to join priesthood or to join religious brothers or religious sisters is the greatest testament of faith that we can show to the world.
So I have a great so fruit to you, Lord. Lord. Yes, Jesus. For stirring up our hunger in our hearts to serve you. One more day, Lord. One more year, Lord. Give us the courage to proclaim your good news through our ways.
Amen. Amen. We encourage you, brothers and sisters, to continue every day in the walk with the Lord. Amen. And if you linger on this river shore, you'll be surely thirsting more and more for God's presence. Amen. So on this note, let us just sign ourselves and bless ourselves in, in the, the name, name of the, of the Father, Father and of the Son, Son and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.